Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. So I have started working on my new course which will be about writing clean code. It's still a very long way till I complete the course, but one of the topics is using intention revealing names for your variables, for your functions, uh, for basically everything, everything that we do in software development in programming it has name associated with it, right? I mean, the files have names, uh, your release builds have names, your folders does have names, uh, everything has a structure and names. So if we go ahead and create a variable, and I have seen this over and over again, something like this. This is a very bad practice to do, because what is this representing? P boolean equals to false. Okay, what is P? Now, if you're writing this code, you will say, well, it's P. It's been published. Maybe you're working on some article website or some sort of a book website where P means published or this stands for published. And this is fine. I mean, you are saying that, okay, P is published, but I can guarantee you that if you come back after two days, you are not going to know what P is. And the worst part will be that when your developer, other developers in your team are going to look at this code with P boolean equals to false, they will have no idea. And if you're putting a comment over here to represent that, oh, while P is published, then this is wrong. So how can we improve this? Well, we can just improve it in giving it a more descriptive name. There we go, published. So always make sure that you are using descriptive name, intention revealing names when you are creating your variables, functions, classes, objects, structures, everything. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at another example. And this example, I'm going to go ahead and simply paste it and then we're going to look at it. Okay. So first of all, right over here, we have some sort of a list. It's called the list. Okay, kind of like a weird name, the list, all right? And it's an array, an array of dictionaries. So you can see this is one dictionary, and there are only two dictionaries. Each dictionary has a key called title and published. And the value for one of them is true, and the other one is false. Okay, then we have a function called get them, which doesn't really make any sense. Like get what? Get them, like them, it's, what is them, right? It returns an array of dictionaries. Then we create a variable called list one, which is simply an array of dictionaries. Always, I mean, never a good idea to use numbers in your variable. Then we go over, loop through it, and we check that if the dictionary is true, then we go ahead and append it, and then we return it. So this is an example of uh, bad function names and bad variable names. The function name is not really revealing what we're doing. The variable over here is not really revealing what it contains. The index, all of those different things, not really revealing anything. So how can we make this better? So first of all, in this context, it's not really a good idea to use an array of dictionaries because you can misspell these things. And also, if you have a dictionary, it will be very hard to create a domain-specific functions on it, right? So let's go ahead and see how we can refactor it, how we can create a much better version. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of using a dictionary, going to represent that with a concrete class or a structure. So possibly we can create a class or a structure called uh, article. And I'm just going to separate it out so that we know that this is a refactored code or a new version of it. There we go. And this particular structure can contain a couple of different uh, properties. Well, title, and we can also have published, which is Boolean. Okay. Now we can go ahead and create a list of articles. Now, obviously, in your actual application, the list of articles might be coming from some sort of a service or a database or something like that. 
but over here we are just hard coding it. All right. Instead of calling it the list, we're simply saying the list of articles. And you can see we have two articles in there article one and article two, which are the article objects. Now, instead of calling our function get them, which doesn't really say anything, get them, what is them, we are going to go ahead and create a function get. Descriptive, published articles, very descriptive function name. Intention revealing name. You can just look at the name of the function and you can say, oh, get published articles. So this particular function is going to give me published articles. And it's going to return an array of articles. Now, if you're using uh, Swift, which we are, then we can use the power of filter or map helpers. But all of these things that I'm showing you right now or writing clean code is all of these things can be done with any programming language, any modern programming language. So you can use C Sharp, you can use Dart, you can use Java. So you can use any programming language. It's not confined to Swift language. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and say list of articles. And we can use the filter, filter, and I can say published equals to true. All right. And this is going to allow us to return the published articles. Now I can go ahead and say over here print and let's see, what is it? Get published articles. And I can call that function. And I can get the published articles right there. Great, right? Hey, if you want to support my channel, then check out my Udemy videos and uh, courses. You can simply go to Udemy and search for my name or check out the YouTube description with all the different links. So I have uh, just released a brand new course on the complete hands-on Swift UI apps using Firebase. This is an amazing course that goes through many different apps for Firebase integration with Swift UI. And I also have a 21 plus hour course on Swift UI. So if you're just starting Swift UI, Swift UI declarative interfaces for any Apple device will be our course. But I have courses on RX Swift, Combine, Composable Swift UI architecture, even Flutter. Now, all the links for these courses should be in the YouTube description. Please try to use those links. If you use those links, then it will really help me out also because I get to keep a little bit more revenue. Thank you so much for your support and stay tuned for more videos.